On Sunday I went to a Trash and Treasure market and picked up this uh, record four and a half plane for $20. In Australia the second hand market's a bit funny so we tend to overpay for things, uh, particularly when they're not in great nick. This plane is complete, uh, which is good, but it does have a bit of rust uh, and could do with a bit of work. The sole, while it's fairly flat, uh, is in pretty rubbish looking condition, same with the sides. The lead cap is quite difficult to remove. Uh, and the blade and uh, chip breaker are very rusted. Other than that though, everything's pretty functional. So I'm going to go through the process that I use to clean up uh, plane. The first step is to disassemble everything. I've already given it a once over with the air compressor to blast off any dirt. Um, the brass components don't need to be cleaned uh, in the rust cleaning solution, they're not corroded, they just need buff. So brass knobs are all okay and obviously the wooden knobs are not going to go in a rust cleaning solution. With everything disassembled you can see it's fairly grotty. Um, I'm going to use a solution called Evaporust. Everything in a bucket, evaporous gets poured on. Uh, this is a non-acidic cleaner. Um, so I can stick my fingers in whatever, it won't hurt me. Uh, you can see that the plane doesn't quite get all the way into the solution so I'll probably have to do this a couple of times. Um, this solution while it looks gross has been used a few times it's a reusable solution relatively cheap compared to acids um, and all I need to do is wait 24 hours and the rust should just wipe straight off then. It's been 24 hours now I'm going to start pulling these out of the evaporized solution, all I've got is some paper towels to catch the spills. To read the ruster it has removed from the front of the frog. Uh, and the big one is that this blade, that was all orange up there, and now it's black where the carbon's just been left behind. Uh, and that can be cleaned up even further. So what I'm going to go do now is wash these down just with water, then dry them off and pour the evaporust back into the um, bottle that it came in. I'm going to focus on the chip breaker for now. This is one of the worst pieces with the most corrosion on it. You couldn't even read the correct angle for grinding is 25 degrees uh, when it was all rusted up. Where these black marks are is where the rust was and the carbon has just been left behind. This can be left as is, but it isn't super pretty, so I'm going to clean that up. The process for this is the same as cleaning up any of the other uh, metal surfaces, uh, other than the uh, lever cap and the brass screws, but we'll get to those later. All you need to do is get a scotch brite pad and some WD-40, just to lubricate it. With the main components cleaned to a pretty good degree, uh, it's now time to work on the shinier parts, which are the brass. Brass, brass tarnishes rather than rusts, um, so this can be cleaned on a buffing wheel if you've got one. I'm going to use my Dremel or rotary tool with a buffing bit on it.
These brass components are now super shiny. I wish I could get all the rest of the plane that clean, but what can you do? With the plane clean, now comes time to lap the sole of the plane. If the sole of the plane isn't flat and true, the shavings you will get will never be flat and true either. Um, and it'll tilt up and down, that sort of thing. So I've got a piece of uh, marble with two pieces of wet dry sandpaper, which I've worked with simple green. Um, and I've drawn a pattern with the sharpie on the bottom of my plane. I just need to push it back and forth over that until it starts to make that nice and flat. Using wet dry sandpaper is relatively important. It keeps the um, metal particles away and helps uh, lubricate it so it's a bit easier to move it back and forth. Having the plane assembled is pretty important too. That way if the frog or whatever bends the cast iron slightly, it's accounted for when you're lapping the salt. few passes it actually looks pretty all right um, this corner needs a bit more work than the rest So using the, so I finished up with the 120 grit, I'm now going to switch to 240 grit um, and that's where I'm going to stop. For the work I'm doing I don't need things super flat or super shiny uh, but you can certainly go up to 400 or even 600 grit to get a uh, completely mirror polish on the back side of your plane. Because this was a second hand plane, there is plenty of pitting. Oh, it's very small pitting. Uh, if this is a brand new plane, obviously you'd get this up to a mirror polish with a lot less effort, but then you put a way up on these planes, how much money you've saved by buying second hand and how many hours you want to put into making it look like it's brand new. As it is, this is going to be perfectly serviceable. Although the paint on the four and a half is in fairly good nick, there is a few places that it needs a red coat just to protect it from further rust. When I got the four and a half, I also got this seven and, uh, 78 record um, rebate plane. Uh, when I got the four and a half uh, record plane, I also picked up this number 78 uh, rebate and filister plane. Uh, the paint on this one is far worse. Uh, the four and a half, the paint's not great, but it's okay. However, what I'm going to do is strip the paint from this uh, 78, strip 78, four and a half, and my Stanley uh, 130 block plane, and paint them all a same, in a similar colour to this spoke shave. That way they'll all be my tools, I'm not going to sell them, these are going to be with me for life, uh, and they'll be prepped protected from rust from years to come. So the next step is to get paint stripper on everything and wash off all the paint and then tape it up and paint it. While I wait for the paint to dry, I've got the handle uh, attached to the drill press with an M6 screw bolt. I'm going to use 150 grit sandpaper just to take the lacquer off. Uh, eventually I may remake these, but for now I'm not going to bother.
the masking tape off this plane is almost done. The handle's been sanded and sealed. Uh, I've left the tote as it is for a good contrast. I will get around to it, but it's just a fiddly job because it can't be done with power tools too easily. Uh, the only thing really left is to seal the exposed cast iron with some paste wax. It also helps it glide a uh, little bit better. The uh, plain iron also needs to sharpen, but I'm waiting on some sharpening uh, diamond sharpening stones from Amazon. If you ask me, this is actually pretty good. Um, I'm this is the first time I've spray painted and I'm really happy with this colour. It kind of makes me wonder why more of these old planes weren't uh, red instead of well, blue and black for the most part. Um, it's not too garish. It's a good colour and now I've got uh, five of my planes, I think, uh, all in this nice red. Um, if you don't have a lot of money, Restoring a hand plane is a great way to get a very good quality tool for not very much. Thanks for watching.